preview for next week, Super Bowl Sunday. And the message is going to be a super life. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, three important pillars, foundations, that God wants you to have in your life, to have a super life. You have these three things in your life, you'll have a super life. Amen. This morning, the uh, title of this morning's message is In the Shadow of His Brother. And never in all my ministry here have I talked about the disciple whose name was Andrew. I learned a lot of things about Andrew. And we're going to learn about what Andrew's claim to fame was. But throughout the Bible, whenever Andrew is mentioned, it's usually in the context he was Simon Peter's brother. So this week when I was getting ready, and you know, as I as I go to the, the, the preach this message, you know, I've said through the years playful things about my brother Fred, you know, but I'm wearing one of his ties this morning, I'm wearing his pants, so I'm gonna be very gentle with Fred today. I'm be very gentle with Fred. But um, uh, this is this is real, this is a very special, I pray this is a very special message this morning because I learned some things. Some things I didn't know. But before I, uh, you know, really started getting into this, I, I Googled brother jokes on my computer. And this one didn't come up, but this is just one of those classic brother jokes. You know the story. There were these two, these two, it was a small town, and these two rotten brothers, Sam and Jack, they were rotten to the core. I mean, they gambled, they smoked, they drank, they were, they were just, they were twin brothers, and oh, man, they... Uh, it was terrible. So Jack dies. Sam goes to the funeral director, says, I got a thousand dollars for the church where the preacher will say, my brother was an angel. Episcopalian said, no way. Presbyterian <laughs> said, not this preacher. Baptist said, no way. Methodist preacher said, I'll do it. So the whole town came out to the funeral. How is this Methodist preacher going to say, Jack is an angel? The Methodist preacher gets up and says, well, I have to be very honest with you. Uh, you know, Jack was, uh, he was a womanizer, he gambled, he drank a lot. Uh, I can't really think of much nice to say about him, but I can say, compared to his brother Sam, he was an angel. <laughs> Here are the, some of the one-liners. Just a couple here. Just a couple here. Uh, my father only made one mistake in his life, and that was my brother. Okay? <laughs> my brother has a new book out, but it is due next week. You know, the library. You know, I'm sure everybody gets that. <laughs> if you haven't got anything nice to say, talk to my brother. <laughs> when life handed my brother lemons, he would squirt them in my eye. Growing up in the Old Bridge section of East Brunswick, the poor section of East Brunswick, across the street from us lived Mr. and Mrs. Weiss. Their four children had left the house. They had a long driveway. It was a corner house. Whenever it snowed, my brother Fred and I were sent across the street to shovel their driveway, and my mother would raise her finger and say, do not dare take anything from Mr. and Mrs. Weiss. And so just through the years, we had a wonderful friendship. They were like adopted grandparents. And then Mr. Weiss told me this story one time. They had, they had four children. They had Jerry, Charlie, Bobby, and Joycey. And Jerry was an outstanding football player, played at South River High School, and uh, before East Brunswick had their own high school. Now it's got a high school of several thousand. But uh, you had to go to South River High School back then. And by the way, noted football players out of South River, a guy named Joe Theismann, okay? A guy named Drew Pearson played for the Cowboys many, many years ago. But, and then Jerry ended up going to the University of Delaware. Mr. Weiss would always brag. He said, when my, he was a, Jerry was a tackle. He said, well, my son, when my son hit somebody, oftentimes they didn't get up. And so, but... So Jerry was a football star at University of Delaware. So Bobby's turn to come look at schools. Immediately they went down to the University of Delaware. Football coach took one look at Bobby and said, I have another Jerry Weiss. I'm excited. 
They finished the tour, they went home, the football coach called later in the week, said to Mr. the elder Mr. Weiss, um, is Bobby going to come to Delaware? He said, no, he is not going to come to Delaware. He said, well, why not? He said, well, you, 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 you ended it when you said to my son, I have another Jerry Weiss. He does not want to be in the shadow of his brother. And uh, Bobby ended up going to, going to Lafayette, did ROTC, actually spent some time in Vietnam where he was wounded, but, but made it out. Bobby did not want to be in the shadow of his brother. The Bible tells us of many sets of siblings, among the most famous, Cain and Abel, Isaac and Ishmael, Jacob and Esau, Joseph and his brothers, the sons of Je Zebedee, James and John, and Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, some of these sibling relationships turned out well. Some of them turned out badly. You know, Cain and Abel. You know, Cain kills Abel. Some of them had their rocky patches, but in the end, turned out positive. In almost all of the relationships, though, one sibling is more prominent than the other. And this is certainly true with the <coughs> brothers in our scripture today. Peter certainly has a very prominent role in the forming of the church. But today we find out more of that story. John 1 verses 35 to 42. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. Now in verse 29, it adds this. who takes away the sins of the world. Let's never forget that. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Amen. Lord, may you richly bless this reading of your holy word, and may you just teach us a simple truth today. <clears throat> that will change our lives. May you teach us a simple truth today, or perhaps even just remind us of a very simple truth today that will change our lives, and perhaps more importantly, Lord, other lives as well. It's in your name we pray. Amen. This, this hit me in studying this. Andrew was originally a disciple of John the Baptist. In fact, in fact, the first four disciples of Jesus, they were followers of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is a class act. You know, he must become more important. I must become less important. That's a good teaching rubric in our lives. He must become more important. I must become less important. I want to fit in to God's plan. Purpose-driven life. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about, it's about Jesus. Our lives are to bring glory to God. And we're to enjoy Him forever. His first move after spending the day with Jesus is to tell his brother about Jesus. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You're Simon, son of John. You're to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Cephas, that's Aramaic for rock. 
And Petra is Greek for rock. That's where that comes from. It's just different translations of the same name. Simeon, the name Simon, means to hear. No, I'm not telling you anything. It just means to hear. Thanks, man. He's very on. By the way, there are some special nuances and emphases in, some, in many of the words used here. This, this text is rich. He brought Simon to Jesus, and Jesus looked at him. Not just a simple look, though. The look can be translated, beheld. It can be translated, Jesus gave him a penetrating glance. Jesus looks steadily at him. Jesus, Jesus stops and checks him out. Looks into his character. Really looks him over. I don't know if you've had somebody do that. One time I was applying to get an apartment somewhere many, many years ago. And the superintendent just kind of like, you know, and who are you? You know, kind of with me down, uh, up and down. Jesus... I don't think he did it that critically, but Jesus like sees into Peter. Among the Hebrew people, names had a great significance. The name was to conform to the character. At times, God changes the names of people. Abram to Abraham. I had to refresh my memory on this. Abraham, exalted Abram. I'm sorry, Abram means exalted father. God changes his name to Abraham, meaning father of many. You're not just going to be an exalted father. You are going to be a father of many. God changes Jacob's name to Israel. Jacob means <coughs> supplanter, heel grabber, deceiver, stealer. God changes his name from Jacob to to Israel, to prince with God. Jesus looks at Peter and says, you're not just going to be a hearer, now you're going to be a rock. You're going to be somebody who I'm going to build my church on. There are slips and there will be stumbling, but Peter, God will use Peter in miraculous ways to build his church. But now let's get back to talking about Peter's brother, Andrew. In the Bible, these are Andrew's marks of discipleship. I did not know this, but Andrew's name means manly. It means man. Manly. Now, very interesting. The beginning of the gospel begins with a guy called man. Andrew. The beginning of Genesis begins with Adam, which also means man. Andrew means manly. He is the first to be called of the twelve disciples. He hears John the Baptist's witness, and the first thing he does is he tells his brother, I found something really cool, and i got to share it with you. I found the Messiah. And he introduces Jesus to somebody who's going to end up being his main man, one of his main men in forming the church. Andrew then is mentioned three other times in the Bible. Does anybody here know? If you're at 8 o'clock, you can't help anybody out. Anybody else know where Andrew is prominent in bringing somebody else to Jesus? Anybody remember? The boy, Shirley, the boy with the fishes and the loaves. Jesus brings him to Jesus. He's got these little barley loaves and a couple of fish. And then in Mark chapter 13, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked Jesus when the temple would be torn down. And then in John 12, verses 20 and 22, Andrew and uh, Philip, I believe, bring Greeks to Jesus, which is a way of Jesus knowing that it's now time, uh, it's now time for his passion. That the world is coming to him, and it's now time for him to give his life. 
so that we may have life. Andrew has a unique role in the kingdom of God. He brings people to Jesus. His name means manly. If you want a tagline this morning, real men bring people to Jesus. Real men bring people to Jesus. We remember St. Francis's line, preach the gospel and if necessary, use words. Other special items in this text, just to share with you this morning. In 136, Jesus is walking by. Jesus is actually walking away. The opportunity is slipping by and Andrew and this other guy, they follow Jesus. And then Jesus, the look is very important. There's three times where it's not just looking, but it's like the disciples, they look at Jesus like he's got something for me. And then Jesus turns around and looks at them and says to them, what are you looking for? It's a great question this morning. What are you looking for? What are you after? What do you want? And then they ask Jesus, where are you staying? And then more of the dialogue. Jesus says, come and see. Check it out for yourself. I worked with the chaplain at Trenton State Prison. And he said, when you talk to God, have the Bible in your hand. And if God says something in the Word, you can say to God, you said this in your Word, and I want it. You said this in your Word, and Lord, I'm not going to be satisfied until I receive this from you. Jesus says, come and see. He invites them to be active and engaged in following Him. There's movement. There's movement in being a disciple. Jesus Christ. And discipleship is following. It's followership. Just be a disciple means to follow God. It, it, means, it means learning and being changed by what you learn. It means learning and being changed. You act different. You are different. God changes you. And then you share that with others. We're different. And God makes us that way. It's a, it's, a simple, it's a simple message this morning. God has a special plan for each of us. Andrew's unique gift in the Bible is that he brings people to Jesus. That is the number one way that people come to church and to faith in Jesus Christ. They also say that when you share Jesus to somebody else, it usually takes about seven times before that person, before it will kind of catch. So, like, don't be discouraged. Maybe you're only the second or third time. No, but God, God uses us to share with one another. I look in this church and people are here. People are here. Most people are here because people have been invited them to come and to be a part of God and the kingdom of God. Andrew brings people to Jesus. He, he shares his faith. That is a lot. And that is enough. And the title of today's message isn't right in the shadow of his brother. Because when you're in God's light, there is no shadow on you. When you're in God's light, there's no shadow on you. And I pray today that each of us, that we walk in God's light, and that we walk in his plan, and that like Andrew, we bring people to Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We give you thanks and praise. And Lord, help us uh, to be like Andrew. 
to bring people to you, to just to live our lives of faith. Um, and may that be natural and supernatural. It's in your name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.